Hey, John. Hey, Ken. Hi, Chris. How are you doing? Pretty good. We'll, we'll see if this new system's a total failure or not with people actually attending, but it looks like at least Ken, Ken may be here. So. <laughs> we, we use this for all of our stuff now. Yeah. The, the recording features are great in our ch members from China. Definitely appreciate it. It's a little bit easier to deal with. It, it works pretty well. I mean, you know, none of these solutions are perfect, but it's, it works pretty well. Hey, Ken, are you actually connected or muted? It says you're online. Yeah, he's not on the video voice yet. If you, there he goes. Uh, he's, uh, he's on the phone. Hey, Ken, you hear me? Yeah. Hey, how you doing? Uh, awesome. Looks like this is somewhat working. So wait, wait uh, for others to join. Hey, Chris, how do I sound? Uh, you sound fine. Uh, amazing from China to the US and back again. Yeah, all good. We'll wait. So far, it looks like people are joining. So give it to five minutes. Hey there. Hello, hello. Morning. Do we already have a document where we put the meeting notes or where do we put these? Uh, it's just, uh, this call will be recorded and there's a deck that's posted in the chat. Okay. So in this case, I'll just mute myself and wait until it's my turn. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Yeah, no worries.
everyone will get uh, started about five minutes past the hour waiting for Alexis and other folks to, to get on. Hi, Alexis, do you hear us or can we hear you? Looks like you're muted, Alexis, not sure. Hi, Alexis, just testing the, the volume here. Yeah, you yes. sound loud and clear. Awesome. Going back on mute. Cool, we'll get started in about three minutes. Hey, uh, Patrick, are you on? Yeah. Hi, All right. Per All right. Perfect. We'll, uh, we'll get you presenting later. Just wanted to make sure you're here. Thanks. Yeah, great. So on our side, it will be, um, uh, um, David Lawrence. Um, okay. Perfect. Justin Capos from NYU. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. We'll give it another minute and then we'll get going. Hey, Chris, I couldn't find the slides link. I thought I posted it to the channel, but I'm not sure if I have. Yeah, I, uh, I just posted it to the little chat window inside Zoom. Can you please send it to the TOC list as well? Uh, it, I, did, I did send it out, so okay. it should be, should be there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. From the TOC, it looks like I have Jonathan, Alexis, and Ken. Is there anyone else that I can't see in the, in the participants list? That may be dialed in. All right, I'll take that as no. It's five past. Uh, Alexis, do you want to go kick it off and let's get this uh, going? Yes, please. I'm just trying to figure out how to work with this selling Zoom thing. Okay. <laughs> so I can see funny little pop up windows all over my desktop, and it's really irritating. Um, Hi everybody, welcome back to another TOC meeting and today I have an, a building site outside my window so I will try and keep it brief. Um, I wanted to once again draw everybody's attention to the document that was pulled together by Ken, Brian Grant and myself. Um, this is soliciting feedback now around operating principles. What are those? Those are essentially uh, principles that we've discovered through working together in the last 12 to 15 months about what the CNCF is trying to achieve and what we mean in particular when we talk about things like APIs, projects, uh, some people like to talk about standards, what, how does all that come together? 
Um, we need to reach consensus on this, and consensus will be interpreted by assent to this document. So I would ask anybody who has not looked at it to look at it, comment, complain, shout, whatever it is that you want to do, and make sure that people around you in the, in the wider community or your colleagues do the same. This is an important document. Does anyone have any questions about this document? Okay, good. So I'm just going to move on to the new projects. Um, another thing that is touched upon in that document is which are our, what are our priorities in terms of gaps in the stack that we think it's important for uh, the TOC to uh, work on in the next 12 months. Uh, the document talks about uh, the APIs, things like CNI and CSI. There are other things as well that people have talked about, like, for example, uh, proxies, security, load balancing, uh, logging. Is there anything else that you would like the, C the CNCF TOC to look at? Please let me know or share on the list. I plan to put together a list of projects and ask people to help to prioritize them uh, quite soon. So that is important. Please do that. Because we're only going to have time to go after certain areas in, in the next, uh, for the rest of the year. Okay. Uh, the next topic, we've had several presentations, um, InfraKit from uh, Docker and Rook.io, and I might have forgotten one or two others. I'm asking you to please say if you would like these to go forward to a formal documented proposal, which will lead to a voting process. Uh, and this is a request to the whole voting TOC, but also to the wider community. If anybody has strong opinions about this, one way or the other, please, please, please speak out. Can we do the prioritization first? Thank you. Somebody's just slacking me to say that Vitesse is another project which I didn't mention. Uh, I didn't quite hear the question. Was that somebody asking for the prioritization before asking to vote on those projects. Yes, that was Brian asking for that. Okay, I mean, yes, we could do that. Uh, it seems to be... Like, in particular, if there are things that are higher priority, I don't even want to look at those projects to think about them right now. Okay. All right. Well, let's, I'll have to think about that, but I will definitely press on with that list in order to speed things up, okay? Okay, thanks. Good, all right. Now, um, where am I in the slides? Here we go. Okay, next item, working group updates. Uh, do we have Camille on the line? I'm not sure if Camille has been able to dial in today. Is Ben Heinemann on the line for storage? Ben's in China, so probably doubtful. <laughs> so. I didn't want any, any kind of request for an update, so this is a little unfair, but I'm just asking if there's any news really. Uh, can yeah. you say a few things about serverless and networking? Yeah, so um, on the networking front, uh, we're looking at kind of bringing in some of the CNI based uh, projects over the next few weeks to present and um, determine based on prioritization um, which ones to move forward with, um, bring it into the foundation if they're interested. Any questions on the networking front? I had a separate question on the topic that was just presented about new projects. It says a comment there, it says needs comments, and it's a little bit unclear where we're supposed to give comments on like Rook and InfraKit. I'm sorry, I didn't hear any of that due to the uh, outside the window. Yeah, I would say submit comments to the um, to the mailing list. Yeah, there's been some threads on InfraKit and Rook already, so if you could find those and, and reply to those, that would be great. Okay, thanks. 
Yeah. And then on, on the serverless front, we had our first meeting, um, I think it was a week ago, a great kickoff meeting. I sent a note out to the list to kind of let everybody know um, we're meeting. I got a few more in, uh, requests to join the serverless list. And I think we mentioned um, to those requests to just go to the Google group and add yourself um, to the group. And um, we're trying to come up with a draft document in the next week that we'll um, share with everyone once it's up. Great. Thank you. Alrighty. So I've shut my windows, but now I'm in a sauna. Okay, great. Um, next topic, which is one that there's going to be a presenter for, is around um, the potential to take the Prometheus metrics format and put it into a form of consumption so that it may be more widely used by other projects that are doing both similar things to Prometheus, but also a wider range of instrumentation um, and communication around events. Uh, there is a champion for this, Richard, who I believe is on the line. Richard, are you here? Yes, I am. Hi there. So uh, hey. could you talk the TOC through uh, what we've discussed so far, what we discussed in Berlin at KubeCon and CloudNativeCon, and your thoughts in general on this, trying, trying to keep it fairly short so that we have time for a project presentation afterwards? Um, yes, so basically, um, as you all know, uh, the Prometheus format is, is quite specific, but it's quite efficient. Uh, there have been thoughts about spinning this out into something uh, more adaptable, so more projects have, have native support for this and more hardware gets support for this. Uh, we've been talking about this on and off. We kind of decided that we should probably have an RFC to just uh, get some some more uh, traditional vendors to include this in their functionality set, or so you could put this as part of public tenders or whatever. Um, and Alexis basically uh, raised interest in making this a real CNCF project, which uh, I think is quite a good idea because this would give us quite a boost in, in networking and, and getting the door open in other projects and, and vendors. That's the very short version. Uh, Richard, this is uh, John Wellmer from Core DNS, and I, I see you have something here about standardizing service discovery mechanisms. I'd be really interested in, in um, being involved in that since, uh, you know, service discovery is part of what Core DNS is about. Yes. Um, so this is uh, kind of detached from, from the first step of what uh, Prometheus uh, exposition format should be doing, uh, because this is what we already have and what's already uh, kind of specified and we have working code and everything. Um, but as soon as this is done, uh, we should really, really look at as I wrote, service discovery and everything, and uh, you're more than welcome to, to join this effort. Sure. Uh, there's one open question about the naming. That's later as well. Uh, if there's more projects or whatever, I suspect that's not quite efficient, but I don't really care either way. It's done. But yes, th this is part of the plan To Once we're finished with that, um, go and, and tackle other things which need some sort of standard. Okay, that's great. Yeah, um, just uh, I guess if you can keep maybe keep the talk informed on how we can, can stay involved with that, I'd appreciate that. Yes. Um, yeah, whatever the standard uh, in, in communicating is, uh, we keep to that, sure. And as soon as we start something new, we'll make sure that you're aware well before that time. Okay, excellent. Thank you. No worries. Please continue. Uh, yeah, so should I just read out the, the slides which uh, you guys are already reading or do we uh, open an actual discussion? I, I don't have a preference. We've got a section at the end um, which we can have a discussion around, I think, but people may want to interrupt you. But I think if you just tell us what you've done so far, uh, where you'd like to go, who's involved, that would be a, a helpful starting point. Uh, you know, okay, you, sure. what's the potential scope of this, et cetera? So uh, as of right now, um, there's people involved from Prometheus, uh, from uh, Google and from InfluxDB. Uh, we have a bi-weekly call, which we'll actually have tonight at uh, 19 UTC, I think. 
uh, if some of you want to join, you're more than welcome to. Um, we basically took the existing format, uh, raised some questions about this. There are some open issues and comments uh, in the linked documents. We would actually appreciate feedback on those, um, not to, to really open the floodgates and have hundreds of people comment, but if there's a few select people, um, this might be of, of value to us at this at this point. And basically for, for the call tonight, I'll try and close a few of those uh, points if possible, and then use that as the working basis of, uh, of writing the internet draft. And that will also be the same thing, which, which uh, will be the basis for open metrics or IP metrics or whatever. Um, yeah, something which, um, is of interest. There's open met, uh, sorry. There's open config. Oh, there's open config. Uh, some of you might be familiar with that. It's basically uh, mostly network vendors uh, trying to get automated config pushes and and uh, log data and metrics to and from uh, networking machines. Um, both Murali Surya, someone from Google, and me poked around people from open config to see how and if they would want to to support or bless this. Um, uh, this format, there is nothing specific yet. There's interest, but nothing more. Um, and that's basically where we stand today. All right. Okay, can you tell us about the open questions? Um, yeah, so at the moment, there's basically only one real question, um, what name to choose. Um, as I wrote, open metrics uh, is kind of uh, taken already, so we might have to look at how to, to deal with that. Um, as I wrote, the, the owner of openmetrics.io doesn't even answer to, to queries about this domain, so I don't think uh, a lot of will happen there. Epimetrics, um, something Alexis suggested. Uh, Chris grabbed the GitHub account or group. I grabbed the IO domain, so um, we should be safe there. Only question is if we, for example, go to service discovery or other things, then a metric centric name will not cut it anymore because obviously uh, it'll not be uh, only focused on metrics anymore. This does not have to be decided as of right now because we can just continue working. We don't need a name at the moment, but we should somehow address this question at some point in near-ish time. Yeah. Have you tried to contact, yeah, you've, have you contacted the GitHub owner? You, the okay. domain, the no, I, the GitHub owner. I contacted the IO owner, not the GitHub owner. Okay, I was, yeah. Try contacting. But I know the process of GitHub to, to try and get at names. I, if you want, I can try and, and uh, reach out to them. Yeah, I would do that if I was you. Okay, and uh, what about the what support? This is what you're looking for. I mean, I think the, the interest in CNCF would be that open metrics is a candidate for a, a common monitoring format or a common event format of some sort. Um, so, metric, events aren't covered. I'm sorry, thank you. Common metric format. So that's something that, you know, I personally would see this as being positioned as if we could um, promote it as something that was useful um, across cloud native use cases and projects. Do you think that that is uh, aligned with your goals and what support you're looking for? Uh, yes, because basically um, exposure, that's the, well, it's political will and push to, I didn't catch that. Hey Richard, I think I'll Okay. Listen. Hello? I, I still hear you. Yeah, okay, you back. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, there was some weird noises. Yeah, anyway. Um so yeah, sure. The the only thing we, we really need for this is uh basically exposure. Quite frankly, uh I would be doing the same uh, even if, if CNCF wasn't interested in this. So yeah. Increasing exposure and getting some political players into the right set of mind or whatever, just to try and push this effort. That's basically it. 
have you um, looked for participation from projects that are outside the kind of core focus area of Prometheus and Influx? Uh, already on the call, we've had core DNS mentioned. Um, who else do you think you'd like to talk? Have you, for example, spent much time with, with the Kubernetes project? Um, I basically anyone who's interested as soon as we have something which is which is published um, I'm interested in every last uh, person who or project who wants to who wants to adapt this uh, personally I would like uh, to talk to Ken at some point because uh, we use quite a bit of Cisco systems uh, hardware <laughs> so SNMP going away would be a personal goal um, else this is Alan Conley. I'm just curious as to, can you describe just basically what the core problem is you're trying to solve? I mean, I, I read through your notes. I, I see you're going to talk about Yang models. Just mentioned, obviously, SNP, which was a way, old way of kind of approaching this problem. Just what's the fundamental problem you're trying to, to solve? And, and then secondarily, maybe scope. Are you talking about a protocol or just representation of the objects, uh, format, or...? At the very fundamental level of what we're trying to do is to basically push the monitoring scene towards a metrics approach. Because at the moment you have a weird mix of events and some metrics and uh, other things and there's a lot of installed base of really, really bad monitoring systems. And notwithstanding tracing and events, which all have their have their uh, value for drill down or for, for post-mortems or something, if you look at what do I need to actually look at to, to see if my service is working, are my customers happy? All these things, if you get into a certain scale or level of scale, um, you need metrics because else uh, you will fail with, with the whole concept. Uh, but as that's you something mentioned, which, lots of ways to get those metrics today. Whether they're any good or not is another question like SNMP, but I'm curious, are, yep. you, are you trying to solve a protocol problem or a representation problem, or are you trying to get uniformity because you have to use 10 different protocols if you want to collect from everything in your stack, right? Yes, I, from my opinion, that should be the goal, uniformity. Uh, anything that affects how applications are written and the kinds of data they export, I think it, uniformity helps uh, vastly or would help vastly. Um, there are other decisions which I think are vastly less important, like uh, whether it's push or pull because a simple proxy can solve that problem or um, even service discovery was mentioned. I think that can, is also separable. It can, that's more of a problem with the monitoring system rather than the applications themselves. Applications are very hard to change and the lack of uniformity I see is a huge problem. So it's like um, yes, perhaps. yes, and and to and to to uh, just on top of this uniformity, what we within the format we have, uh, for example, we've had label sets. So we have uh, we don't have a hierarchical model. We have uh, n-dimensional matrices if you need them. Um, this is something which is just a logical conclusion of using this format. So are you going to try to, to be honest? This is, are you going to try to this standardize is kind the information of, model? Sorry, come again. Would you try to standardize the information model like MIBS tried to do way back? Is it that kind of an approach? Or would you allow people to create their own objects as long as they do them uh, syntactically correct? There's two steps to this. Uh, as long as they as they get into the right set of mind, um, I that's that's the first step. Of, obviously, to keep uniformity, it would make sense to have some sort of uh, BCP or something which tells you, okay, try and and uh, format your data like this or something. But as the very first step, if you adapt this kind of format, you will basically get a few things for more or less free because there's no other way to do them. And as, for example, Facebook and Google have shown, um, this kind of approaching or this approach to, to monitoring at scale uh, works very, very well. And that's basically where we want to push people a little bit with this. Yeah, okay. just another uh, quick comment. I'm a big fan of labels, obviously. This is Brian again. Um, that we need a similar kind of data model, uh, metadata model for logging. Some of the old standard logging formats like syslog uh, have very little metadata, like maybe just host name which doesn't, yes. it's not adequate in the cloud native space. So having a more cloud native 
format that has more flexible metadata, I think is an important aspect. Yes. Okay, I understand. Just one last question. Are, are you going to specify the protocol as well as the model? Uh, obviously, um, the, the short answer is use HTTP and uh, at least support text. Uh, we might uh, make protobuf mandatory or not. Uh, that's still undecided, but uh, yes, basically once we are finished, you get one RFC or one ID or one whatever, uh, which tells you how to implement something which Prometheus and by this time probably Grafana and InfluxDB and others as well can come along and scrape and get data from. Okay. Or put a proxy in front and, and have it pushed to. Okay, thanks. No worries. So Richard, thank you very much. I just want to second the remarks that Brian made about uniformity. I think that is a very important goal for lowering costs uh, for customers to adopt and for vendors to uh, invest, uh, both around open source projects, around commercial products. And I see the goals, from, for my part, when we first spoke about this, the analogy that I drew in my mind was around open tracing, where we're hoping to you know, vastly, vastly expand the capabilities of our monitoring products by reducing the surface area for how we talk to them. Um, that, that would be an amazing outcome if, if we could do that. Okay, so does anyone have any other questions about this topic? Um, and does anyone want to volunteer to help Richard um, take this through to the next stage, which we should probably define? Hey Alexa, this is Ken. I'd be happy to work with Richard. Okay, thank you. Anyone else want to volunteer to get in touch with Richard and help him to, to shape this up a little bit more? We can have another conversation about it maybe in a future meeting. Yeah, hey, this is Lee Calcode. I uh, want to raise my hand there. I'm also going to draw a quick analogy in, in part maybe to help my own understanding as well as the rest on the, on the call. So I'd worked in the DMTF not too long ago to create Redfish, which was essentially the next generation of IPMI. And I guess for, for the, you know, Richard, is that, it sort of sounds like one of the core goals here is kind of next gen for SMP. Well, and that's a personal goal um, because I, I, I really, really need SNMP and I really, really hate SNMP. <laughs> but uh, this, is, this is part of the personal motivation in, in what I see on a daily basis. It's, there's more to this effort than just me getting rid of SNMP. Okay. But that's part of it, at least personally. Okay. Okay, so Lee and Ken, um, if you can't get hold of Richard directly, you can email me and I'll put you in touch. Or just post onto the TOC list. Richard, please make sure that you are on the TOC list where discussion may happen around this. Um, one last question, um, Brian from Google. Um, is there anyone in the Kubernetes team who might have any spare time at all to, to look at any of this with, uh, with Richard? Good question. Uh, I mean, the Google folks that are involved, I do talk to, they're from our uh, internal monitoring team uh, working on the projects that inspired Prometheus. Um, honestly, they're probably the best people, although you know, if you want to get more visibility within the Kubernetes, uh, community, I recommend talking to SIG Instrumentation, uh, which is the SIG that's all about monitoring and logging, both of Kubernetes itself and also of applications running on Kubernetes. Right. Okay, Richard, maybe you, you could make yourself known in that, in that working group or, or special interest group, rather. Yeah, I'll post information to the Zoom chat. Thank you. I'm not able to get the Zoom chat because I called in by telephone. If someone could just send me that one by email and I'll try and make sure to get onto the talk list and right, go from you can there. send it to me and I'll introduce you to Richard by email. Okay. Thanks. Okay, perfect. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Richard, for that um, presentation. No worries. Um, and now we have another project presentation. I apologize for the late notice on this. That is my fault. Uh, previously, Docker had asked if this could be slotted in, and I forgot to follow up and was reminded today. So, apologies for the confusion, but we do have a bit of space. So, um, I believe we have 
Um, Patrick is going to introduce some presenters from the Docker team to tell us about Notary, which I'm sure you've all heard of. Yeah, so there are, there are two, two presenters, uh, David Lawrence uh, from Docker, who's going to talk about Notary, uh, and uh, Justin Capos from NYU, who's going to talk about TUF. And uh, what we're talking about is a donation of both the spec, TUF, and the implementation uh, Notary to CNCF. Uh, David, you want to get started? Sure. So I'll do a very brief introduction to Notary and then hand over to Justin. Uh, to talk about you know the update framework uh, tough which is the underlying um, design on which notary was built uh, and then i'll pick up again to talk more about um, notary and its architecture and community so uh, very quickly uh, what is notary um, i think you're probably all familiar with it but it's a framework for a trusted content distribution um, it's the only golang implementation of the update framework which was uh, designed as we'll hear by Justin and his team. Um, and it is currently the uh, de facto standard for signing containers. Uh, it's been picked up by the major container registries and is seeing use both in those registries and in um, custom projects that uh, companies are doing for uh, various uh, arms of government and Fortune 500s. So handing over to Justin quickly to talk about Tuff. Uh, Justin, are you on the line there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yep. Yes, can you? Can you hear? Okay, great. Um, yeah, so the basic idea behind Tuff is to have uh, a way to do software distribution where you have a repository that is resilient to compromise. So if somebody breaks into a repository, steals keys, um, compromises, uh, roles, gets insiders in your organization to, to turn over um, access to servers or other things like this to bad guys. It's not just a um, like a one master key and, and then everybody's uh, in big trouble. There's sort of a graceful degradation of security depending on what is compromised, how and where. And uh, when we, we did this, we really tried to focus on security best practices um, uh, where we use a lot of uh, kind of common techniques from other areas, separation of privileges, threshold signatures, et cetera. Um, but we also, what, one thing that, that we did is we really focused on key revocation and how do you recover securely from situations where things go wrong. So that was really a, a primary focus of, of what it is, uh, what, what Tuff does. One other thing about Tuff is it doesn't, specifically tell you exactly how you have to perform a task. It's not intended to uh, be like an absolute uh, rigid specification that means that you have to throw away what you're doing and install a new software stack or, or anything else like that. Uh, quite the contrary, it's meant to work seamlessly or as close to seamlessly as possible in your existing setup and just provide you with security um, uh, to ensure that um, you know that the that uh, the things that you intend to have happening uh, are are actually happening correctly. Um, okay, so tough in the cloud native ecosystem. So it uh, helps to solve uh, data distribution, trusted data, um, and uh, there's lots of different. Um, implementations of Tuff that are available. There's about a dozen different implementations uh, that are out there by different groups. Um, and really what we're, what we're aiming to do is to have, um, as I kind of alluded to before, rather than have a very specific configuration you have to use for things, Tuff is meant to be a more abstract way of um, providing and delegating uh, trust inside of a, a, an, an ecosystem. So it works together uh, with a lot of other uh, uh, security mechanisms and existing systems. Uh, and TUF's use cases today, so uh, obviously TUF is, is used in production in, in Docker, um, and uh, uh, it's been standardized by Python, it's used by Flynn and, um, and Leap, and uh, there's lots of other communities that have, um, are like quite far along and have been very instrumental in parts of TUF. Uh, folks at, at CoreOS have made really excellent contributions, and uh, we're getting contributions now from the OCaml community. Tuff is actually also used um, on cars today. There's a, a version of Tuff 
uh, that has a, uh, some added functionality to make it more automotive, um, applicable in that domain called Optane that's uh, being sold by uh, multiple different vendors in the automotive industry um, and is being integrated by a bunch of others, including through a big open source consortium uh, called Genevi, which is uh, that, that integration is in progress, but is, is quite far along uh, due to some of our, our partners in that space. Um, and the community itself, so it's been open sourced as an MIT license since 2010. Um, you can find the statistics about stars and contributors, maintainers, uh, commits, so on, on, on slide 21. Um, and uh, with that, I think I'll hand it back over to David. All right. Thank you, Justin. So looking at where Notary fits into the cloud native ecosystem, um, I took the, the diagram that's on the CNCF website. Um, which is a relatively closed system. Like data has to get into that from somewhere uh, and users are producing images and pushing them into the container image registry that was in that diagram. And the, the purpose of notary is to secure the provenance of that image so that we're no longer trusting that registry to hold on to it and make sure it's secure. We actually have a signature with an offline key that goes all the way back to the user who produced the image. And we can pin keys onto our production nodes such that any container we pull onto those nodes can be verified that it hasn't been tampered with from the point of publishing. Not just that it hasn't been tampered with while it's been sitting on the reg, or not that it hasn't been tampered with in flight, because TLS to a registry is only going to give you a confirmation that the data wasn't tampered with in flight. Uh, the architecture of Notary itself is uh, we have a server that holds all of the metadata and deals with user requests, but it only holds signed metadata. Uh, in a database, um, we currently support MySQL or MariaDB and PostgreSQL. Um, there is then a backend service that we call the signer. This deals with timestamping and snapshotting. Now, having those keys online does mean that the server can delay an update, but it can never fully stop an update from going out. And that's the security model we chose to make it convenient for users to actually make use of notary because timestamping needs to happen frequently. And for example, even having somebody come on daily to have to do the timestamping would be a significant burden. Uh, and if they forget it for one day, you don't want the entire system to break. So we made timestamping an online operation. Snapshotting became an online operation later when we started dealing with collaboration and repositories. We didn't want to have to people to, sh we didn't want people to have to share a snapshotting key. So we moved snapshotting to be an online operation. Uh, that however, snapshotting needs to happen less frequently. So if you have a regular cadence of updates, it's something that a user can still perform themselves if they want to keep the trust in the online components as minimal as possible. Uh, now the keys that are used by the signer are all generated internally and they're encrypted by the signer before they're put into their own separate database. Uh, and it's a separate database because again, we wouldn't want somebody who accesses the frontline server to gain access to those keys directly. Um, so we wouldn't want to mix the data into one database there. On the client side, there is a notary client. Um, it has a, a CLI that allows you to do all of the operations necessary uh, to manage a notary repository, uh, including delegating operations out to other users, rotating all of your keys, um, fetching data online. It can actually deal with verification as well. If somebody wants to do a very sort of simple high level uh, interface where they just want to um, verify packages that they're downloading from some other package manager. But additionally, it was designed to have uh, to be used as a library. And most of the integrations we've done with Notary have been as a library. Um, so moving on to Notary in the cloud native ecosystem, I guess I've doubled my slide title. So the goal, as I said, it solves the problem of image provenance and it can be more generally applied. Um, we're seeing it being used in lots of other places like Linux kit, uh, where it's actually being used to construct the individual containers that make up the OS. Um, because Notary is built to the update framework and not specifically for containers, it can be used for any type of trust over any type of uh, content. And what we'd really like to see, and we've been talking to uh, people like Nathaniel Copa of Alpine, uh, we would like to see Notary being used more generally to sign every piece of code uh, that's being deployed through package managers 
and then going a layer down in something like Infricate being used to actually sign the OSs that are getting deployed onto um, your nodes within your cluster. So the use cases for Notary, obviously signing container images uh, for trusted distribution. We're already seeing this being done by Docker, uh, by Quay, uh, by Huawei. Motorola is using it for a custom um, platform they're building for the British government. And VMware's uh, open source harbor registry um, also uses Notary. Uh, we're seeing it being used for signing system components and packages for system updates in Linux Kit. Uh, there is even discussion now about using it as the package manager for Linux Kit. We're seeing it being used to sign file system integrity checksums as part of Mobi, uh, Project Mobi. Um, we are seeing it being used, we're seeing thresholding being used in a, a slightly different mechanism to the tough spec version of thresholding in both Docker data center and Quay. The idea of thresholding is that multiple parties have to sign off on a piece of data before it becomes valid. Uh, the update framework also has a definition of thre thresholding that we are in the process of adding to Notary. Um, and we want to use it eventually to sign service definitions in Swarm and Kubernetes so that somebody can't arbitrarily change how a service runs, what it talks to, what secrets it has access to. Uh, we want your actual, the description of what your uh, deployed service looks like to be a signed artifact when it gets sent to your cluster. The Notary community uh, is relatively young, but has been very active. Uh, we open sourced Notary at DockerCon in San Francisco in 2015. Since then, we've had uh, 865 GitHub stars and 156 forks and 45 contributors. Uh, and the contributors we've seen picking up recently is more and more people are starting to use Notary for more and more projects. Uh, we have eight maintainers across three companies. Uh, Docker has the majority of the maintainers. But we also have Evan Cordell from CoreOS and Huka Ping from Huawei. And in the two years we've been around, we've had 2,600 commits and 34 releases, most of which are point releases. We haven't actually reached a 1.0 yet. Uh, we want to um, reach the 1.0 version of the tough spec in terms of features before we call it a 1.0 release of Notary. Uh, so thresholding, tough spec thresholding is the one outstanding feature uh, that we have yet to implement there. And we are in the process of doing it. Uh, more community information. Uh, said the project is mostly in Go. Um, we do have some other bits in there, things like C where we have integrations with uh, the YubiKeys as a signing option. Um, the activity has been relatively steady. We've been iterating slowly towards this 1.0 release over a long period after an initial push of sort of getting the uh, core functionality out there so that we could start using it. Um, and yeah, I think uh, our alignment with CNCF, um, we provide state-of-the-art trust and provenance for content distribution. Uh, this is something that is needed by everyone, uh, is missing in a lot of places, and we believe the update framework is the best uh, way of doing this, and that Notary has already become the de facto standard within the container ecosystem. Uh, we use existing CNCF projects. We use gRPC heavily for communications between the server and signer, um, and we've been looking at doing a client-level gRPC interface to the Notary server instead. At the moment, it's just an HTTP uh, URL-based sort of RESTful interface. Um, and we also use Prometheus. Uh, and we believe this will significantly enhance the existing CNCF projects, uh, particularly ContainerD, where I've been talking to Stephen Day about using Notary as a name resolver, which is a, a concept they have in ContainerD for taking what the user typed in and turning it to a canonical, re canonical reference to the piece of data they need to download for the image. Uh, that was everything I had. Um, I don't know if I'm meant to take questions now or if there's discussion or uh, <laughs> hand back to uh, Alexis. I have questions. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. Uh, I mean, I might have missed it, but is there anything else that people are using that provides alternative functionality that has any resemblance to the type of use cases that you've asked through? Because it seems like uh, you're the 
only dog in this race, from what I understood, which leads me to my next question, which is, um, you don't have a huge number of GitHub stars, not that we should care too much about that. I mean, is that just because it's a bit of a uh, unsexy area uh, for people to work on or, or what? So what are your thoughts on those two questions? So the first question, if there's any other options, um, Red Hat has recently released, uh, actually they released it last year, but they recently published a blog post about the signing mechanism that they've implemented. Uh, it is essentially just GPG signing. Uh, and GPG signing has a lot of issues with it. Uh, for one, um, one of the ones that we frequently raise is that software expires. Software gets vulnerabilities. We don't want it to be valid after a certain point in time. A GPG signature cannot be invalidated. Uh, so we consider, the implement we consider that particular alternative implementation to be severely flawed. Uh, in terms of the community, um, I would agree that this is both relatively unsexy and highly complex. Um, the people we've seen getting involved tend to be people that either have significant need or significant existing knowledge about security. Uh, we have certainly not attracted um, casual developers who are interested in getting uh, involved in an open source project. Um, we've tried to get people involved who are less experienced. I would say uh, Hookah Ping from Huawei has been one of our success stories there. Uh, he, is by, he is not a security engineer by trade, um, but he was uh, made a maintainer because he was just heavily involved in the project and um, dealt with a lot of the, I guess, bookkeeping, grunt work, making sure documentation was good, making sure code was consistent, um, you know, making sure that we were reviewing PRs. He just came in and kept sort of keeping us, um, keeping us on our toes. So we do try and encourage contribution from all areas of the, the software development and open source community. Um, but as you said, uh, it is not the sexiest area. Uh, and I think also the people perceive that there is a high uh, level of expertise required to get involved. And I think that's one of the, one of the things that's held us back in getting more uh, contributors. Do you think that you need more contributors to be successful? Absolutely. Um, particularly in the area of uh, validating our design. Um, you know, the vast majority of mistakes that come in security are at the implementation stage. So getting more eyes on the project, getting more review, um, I think is critical for security. We believe the platform is secure and well built at the moment. Um, but the update framework has a, an, aug uh, an update process called uh, tough augmentation proposals. Uh, so new features are being added to the update framework as a, a conceptual thing. And those features are going to get added to Notary at some point. And the more eyes we have on those, the less likely we are to have any security vulnerabilities in the future. So uh, Mark Peake here from VMware. Uh, also, I'll, I'll say that Notary is built into Harbor, like uh, you said earlier, but some, something like Harbor has over 2,000 stars. So if you're looking at uh, the scope of which it's been uh, integrated into other products, then it has a much larger uh, following. Okay. I thought Harbor was solving a slightly different problem. Maybe I misunderstood. I guess it's the enterprise repo as it describes. Yeah. There was another question in the chat from Kapil around GPG signing. Um, as an alternative. I don't know if you have any comments or color on that, uh, David. Yeah, so that was the comment I made earlier about um, one of the, the key, key issues with GPG signing is you cannot expire a GPG signature. But software gains vulnerability, and you do want a way to say this piece of software is no longer valid. Uh, so GPG signatures, I consider them a primitive. We can use GPG as a signing mechanism in Notary. Uh, or in the update framework. Um, but the update framework defines a larger collection of metadata that gives you guarantees beyond just simply the signature. The signature tells you who signed it. It doesn't tell you anything more than that. The update framework and notary tell you, is this data still fresh? Should I still be using it? Um, it can tell you if a quorum of people have decided that this particular piece of data should be trusted. Um, it can give you prioritization. So it can, it can say, you know, I will trust this source over this other source 
Uh, so if, if, if it's not simply relevant to containers, but let's say if the Django, you know, foundation publishes a new version of Django, I can trust them over the Python package index in a programmatic way using the update framework. So I think it, it comes with a large number of benefits over simple GPG signing, but GPG signing could be used as a signing mechanism in the context of notary. So Capella's just pointing out that GPG subkeys provide for signature expiration in these cases as well. And that is one way to do it, but that's going to expire every piece of data you signed with that key. And in notary, you can be selective about removing things. Every piece of data has a signature, but if I want to keep a hundred pieces of data valid and only invalidate one of them, I only have to remove that one thing from one file and re-sign the one file. I don't have to re-sign the other hundred pieces of data. Okay. Anyone got any other questions? All right. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, I think we're on to our last question, which is the next TOC meeting lands on July the 4th, which is a day when many of you will be doing something else. Um, I'm suggesting that we have a meeting on the 11th instead. Does anyone violently object to that? Okay, Chris, please move the meeting to the 11th in the calendar. Sounds good to me. And thanks very much, everybody. Uh, please remember to use the public list for follow-ups. It is useful. Okay, bye-bye. All right, take care, everyone. Thanks, we'll uh, post the recording of this meeting uh, over the next few days, thanks.